بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وآله وصحبه وسلم اللهم افتح لنا فتوح الآرفين ووفقنا توفيق الصالحين وانفعنا بالقرآن والذكر الحكيم اللهم انفعنا بما علمتنا وعلمنا بما ينفعنا وزدنا علما يكربنا منك برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم لا سهل إلا ما جعلته سهلا وأنت يا حي يا قيوم تجعل الهزن إذا شئت سهلا سهلا اللهم عيذنا من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا وصلح لنا شأننا كله لا إله إلا أنت نستغفرك ونسوب إليك وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وآله وصحبه وسلم وبعد فقال المولف الإمام الرازي رحمه الله ونفعنا به وبكم So Imam al-Razi rahimahullah is talking about the, the um, Ashab al-Kahf, the story of the um, people of the cave. And at this point he says, you know, that he says, our companions or our brothers, the Sufis, have used this story as one of the proofs of the possibility of miracles taking place at the hands of people who are not prophets people of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who are not prophets um, you remember last time then he said bef- and he wants to deal with this is- issue in depth so last time he first mentioned he said before we go into the issue itself and, and the proofs for that we have to clarify two premises or two concepts the first one was what is the meaning of wali and that's what we were talking about last week mm-hmm. and basically he was looking at the linguistic meaning of wali um, wali is a word in Arabic that can have uh, two opposite meanings so the wali can be the one who protects and the wali can also be the one who is protected the one who protects and the one who is protected so in Arabic you find this type of thing can happen certain words another good example is the word maula the word maula um, so in the Arabs when, when they had a slave if they freed the slave the freed slave became the maula of his ex-master, which means client. Yeah? And, and that also has a legal status in Sharia as well, ex, ex-slave, you know, the ex-master. He's the maula of the ex-master. But the, the ex-master is also referred to as maula. So the ex-slave calls the ex-master maula, and the ex-master calls the ex-slave maula. So they have the, the you know this relationship inverse, but both you know the term applies to both. Um, so the maula can be the client, or the maula can also be the master, the ex-master, or the patron, you know the patron and client relationship. Similarly with wali, often you might see it translated as protecting friend. So the wali has that concept, the person who gives the protection, you know, so the higher side of the relationship is wali, and the, the one also is also wali, they're both called wali. So Allah is al-wali, it's one of his names. Yeah, and it says in the Quran, Allahu wali ladina amanu, Allah is the wali of those who believe. So that means he's the protecting friend of those who believe. But then also the believers are called awliya, or, which is a plural of wali. Um, so they are the ones who are protected by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that's that's what he was talking about last time. Um, he mentioned some of the other verses of Quran which this this term is used. ذَلِكَ بِأَنَّ اللَّهَ مَوْلَى الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَأَنَّ الْكَافِرِينَ لَا مَوْلَى لَهُمْ 
So the word Mawla itself is from the same root as Wali. So it says in the Quran Surah Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Ayah number 11, that is because Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is the Mawla of those who believe. He is the Mawla, the, like the patron of those who believe. And the disbelievers, they have no Mawla. The disbelievers, they have no Mawla. They have no protector. They have no patron. وَقَوْلُهُ إِنَّمَا وَلِيُّكُمُ اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ In Surah Al-Ma'idah 55, إِنَّمَا وَلِيُّكُمْ اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ Your only protecting friend is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So these are just, he gives the instances from the Qur'an in which this term is used, wali. وَأَقُولُ الْوَلِيُّ هُوَ الْقَرِيبُ فِي اللُّغَةِ فَإِذَا كَانَ الْعَبْدِ قَرِيبًا مِنْ حَضْرَةِ اللَّهِ uh, Fakhruddin al-Razi rahmullah, adds another point from himself. He says the word wali in uh, linguistically can means also close. It's got a, a, a meaning of closeness in there. Um, so he said, when the slave is close to the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, qariban min hadratillah, to the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, بِسَبَبِ كَثْرَةِ تَاعَاتِهِ وَكَثْرَةِ إِخْلَاسِهِ وَكَانَ الرَّبُّ قَرِيبًا مِنْهُ بِرَحْمَتِهِ وَفَضْلِهِ وَإِحْسَانِهِ فَهُنَاقَ حَسُلَةِ الْوَلَايَةِ So the slave is close to the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by the means of doing very much obedience, many acts of obedience and having a very strong sincerity So you see how they mention acts of obedience, but link that immediately to ikhlas. Because there may be people who are doing very many acts of obedience, but there's no ikhlas, then it's of no benefit. And that doesn't bring you closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Like the Prophet ﷺ mentioned about those people who will pray, and you will feel that your prayer is nothing. They will fast, and you will feel that your fast is nothing. But iman leaves them like an arrow leaves a bow. So they don't have the ikhlas, they don't have the iman. Even though they have their outward actions are excessive, lots of prayer, lots of fasting. Uh-huh. So you know you can't. Sometimes you can't tell from the outward what is in the inward. Um, I was just gonna f- funny uh, mention that funny statement of Imam Al Ghazali about the beard. The longer the beard, the less the taqwa. But because I, I've by mistake, I've trimmed my beard very shortly, <laughs> so that's why I thought I don't know if I should say it or not. Uh, my beard trimmer was um, jammed in the wrong. Uh, so it's a bit of a disaster. Alhamdulillah, So, um, so he is close to the presence of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, and Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala is close to him. With his mercy, his bounty, his ihsan. And so here the person has acquired wilaya. The person has acquired wilaya. Um, المقدمة الثانية إذا ظهر فعل خارق للعادة على الإنسان فذاك إما أن يكون مقرونا بدعوة أو لا مع دعوة So now it says the second uh, premise or the principle that we have to understand first of all is that when something happens which breaks the normal rules which breaks the norms, the aada uh, what we would probably call nowadays the laws of physics the laws of physics. Um, 
the Muslim theologians had a very excellent, precise understanding of this. So they called it Adat, Hukmul Ada. This is the the norm. Uh, this is like the normal behavior. But they knew that it doesn't just because it's Hukmul Ada doesn't mean it has to happen that way. So when we say law of physics uh, in, in the Islamic theology. We don't believe that in the in the way scientists believe that that it's an unbreakable situation, unbreakable law. No? So we we believe fire burns through hukmul ada, through the norms, the 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 um. But it may not burn if Allah Subhanahu wa Taala doesn't want it to burn, it won't burn. And in fact, strictly speaking, in our aqidah. If we believe that fire itself will burn you, that can be considered kufr. To believe that fire itself burns you can be considered kufr because in fact it, we believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala causes everything directly. So when you put the hand in the fire, the fire is not burning you but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is causing that fire to burn you at that time. The fire in itself has no power, in other words. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's power comes in every moment, in everything, you know. Um, so that was a really amazing um, insight of our theologians. Um, so this hukmul ada, you know, the norms. Um, So it says the thing to understand is that when this is broken for some reason, yeah, when these norms are broken by some action of someone, first of all we can say that this this would either be either the person who this has manifested with, either he will uh, this will be linked to a claim. Or it is not linked to any claim. Yeah? So when you see this uh, thing take place, this this breaking of the norms, or breaking of the laws of physics, either it will take place at the, t- the person with whom it is taking place, he is making a claim at the time. Yeah? Or he is not making a claim. وَالْقِسْمُ الْأَوَّلْ وَهُوَ أَنْ يَكُونَ مَعْدَاوَ فَتِلْكَ دَعْوَ إِمَّا أَنْ تَكُونَ دَعْوَ الْإِلَهِيَّةِ أو دعوة النبوة أو دعوة الولاية أو دعوة السحر وتاعة الشياطين فهذه أربعة أقسام Okay, so what sort of claim, the different claims that could be coming from this person It could be a person who is claiming divinity so he's actually claiming to be uh, God uh, or a God. Uh, it could be someone who is claiming to be a prophet. It could be someone who's claiming to be a wali. Or it could be someone who's claiming that this is, is this is black magic uh, or someone who worships the devil uh, or uh, the dark dark side. Uh, a funny and interesting one of these is this guy Sai Baba in India. Okay. I don't know if people have heard of him. <laughs> this guy has got big bush, bu- fuzzy hair and he's in India. He's called Sai Baba and they believe he's the reincarnation of God. And he's got literally millions of followers. Millions and millions of followers from all over the world go there every year. Did he die recently? When did he die? Oh. Okay, don't make dua for him or anything. So this guy, he claimed to be God, and he was showing these miracles, you know, to people. Uh, so people would go to him, and he would always be performing these things, and making things appear out of nowhere, and giving them to people. One of the things people noted was, when it was really poor villages and people like that, that were coming to him, he would give them like dust or something, you know, make it appear. <laughs> but when it was very rich people, he would give them like a gold ring or something like that. But he would literally just make the thing appear in his hand and he would give it to them, you know. 
And many, many people have witnessed this uh, from him. And then Channel 4, uh, they'd done a documentary and they were filming him secretly from a far off distance, you know, but doing like close up zooms and all that stuff. Uh, and they captured him doing, uh, slipping things out of uh, his sleeve and his pocket and stuff like that. So he was nothing more, just a simple, you know, one of those magicians, you know, who just sleight of hand and everything. So you can see the videos on YouTube and stuff, you know, they, they, they've, they showed it on the documentary and they like were highlighting, you know, putting the spotlight on that, so you see his hand just slip out the thing and all this thing. So, you know. Yeah, a lot of people take him as God, you know, and worship him and everything. So, okay, but that's not khariq al ada. That's not that's not breaking the laws of physics. That's just simple trickery, you know, so, uh, illusions and stuff. He probably he probably did have other stuff as well, like jinns with him, because I know um, someone I know actually, you know, Peter Saunders, the the um, the famous photographer. Before he became Muslim, he actually went to this guy in India before, you know, when he was searching spiritually and all that. And he went to this guy, Sai Baba, he, said, he mentioned it somewhere. And he said, this Sai Baba guy told him stuff that no one could have known about him. And I think he actually said to him something like, you, this is, you know, you, you're going to become a Muslim or something like that. You know, he indicated to him. So it was a bit strange, so he may have had other... Um, gin and things like that probably helping him, I expect. So anyway, these are the four things. al al awwal al ilahiya So the first one is those who claim divinity. وَجَوَّزَ أَصْحَابُنَا So he says our our companions, meaning the scholars, you know, the scholars of 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 Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah, have said that it is it is possible for the breaking of the normal laws of physics to take place at the hand of someone who claims divinity, meaning obviously a false claimant because it could not be a true claimant, someone who's claiming divinity. وَكَمَا نُقِلَ ذَلِكَ أَيْضًا مِنْ فِي حَقِّ الدَّجَّالِ He says, this has also been clearly narrated with the respect to the Dajjal that when he comes, he will manifest certain things that will be breaking or seem to be breaking the normal laws of physics. Uh, interestingly now, of course, I mean, in those times they assumed that they would be خَارِقُ adat. But now we can we we can possibly um, consider those that those things that were mentioned in the hadith about Dajjal, which appear to be that he will show miracles, may have actually been technological things, you know, because the technology we see now around us is unbelievable stuff, you know, that people in the past couldn't have even imagined. Uh, they would have just thought this is like magic, you know, or, or just breaking off the norms, like picking up a, a device and speaking to someone far away. All these things are just, you know, just, just amazing stuff. But it's not actually, it's not actually breaking off the laws of physics. This is actually through technology. You know. قال أصحابنا وإنما جاز ذلك لأن شكله وخلقته تدل على كذبه. So uh, he says our companions, meaning the scholars, have said this is only. Permissible for the, such a person to manifest these things because it will be so obvious to people that he's a liar. You know, the people of Iman and Basira, it will be obvious to them from his shakal, from his appearance and his physical form that he is uh, not a true uh, claimant. For the Hurul Khawarik ala yadihi la yufdi ila talbis. So the fact that such a person would manifest miracles will not lead to uh, people becoming confused who are true believers. al thani Is anyone feeling hot? Are you okay? Open door or is it okay? 
come put your old there. How you feel, Solomon? Are you alright? Yeah, normal. Good. Hmm? No, I'm just wondering if everyone's right. I'm, I'm okay. Who are Idia So the second uh, type of person is someone who is claiming prophecy. فهذا القسم على قسمين لأنه إما أن يكون ذلك المدعي صادقا أو كاذبا So these may be further divided into two types It might be either truthful claim or a false claim to prophethood فإن كان صادقا وجب ظهور الخوارق على يده وهذا متفق عليه Obviously if it's a truthful claim to prophethood then um, there's no problem uh, with him performing these miracles yeah? and this is something agreed upon by all scholars بَيْنَ كُلِّ مَنْ أَقَرَّ بِسِحَةِ نَبُوَّةِ الْأَنْبِيَاءِ وَإِنْ كَانَ كَاذِبًا لَمْ يَجُوزُ ظُهُورُ الْخَوَارِقَ عَلَى يَدِهِ If this person is a false claimant to prophethood then he's not permissible for Miracles to take place in his hand, at his hand. وَبِتَقْدِيرَ إِنْ تَذْهَرْ وَجَبَ حَصُولُ الْمُعَارَضَةِ Because if, if he was able to perform the breaking of the laws of physics, this would lead to a problem because then how do we know who are the true claimants to prophethood? So this is, I mean, there was this, um, there was an opinion floating around amongst the Muslims that the Prophet Sassam didn't perform any miracles. And the only miracle he had was the Quran. Yeah? Which clearly goes against the very Sahih narrations of all of the miracles of the Prophet Sassam. Some of them uh, even being mutawatir, so not having any doubt in them. Um, this, or, this is, you know, this, the, it's a book you still find in bookshops um, by Muhammad Haikal um, on the Sira. Have people seen that in the book, in Muslim bookshops? Yeah. What's it called? Just Life of Muhammad or something like that. Muhammad Haikal. Hayat Muhammad. In Arabic as well, is it? Yeah, in Arabic as well. So this guy Muhammad Haikal, um, you know, he writes in the introduction that uh, the Prophet ﷺ did not perform any miracles apart from the Quran, which is a miracle of the Prophet ﷺ. He's got no, 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 uh, nowhere he's coming from. You know, he can't. I mean, he, he's not coming from anywhere except an apologetic stance towards uh, the European. Uh, the European infliction upon our lands, you know, because when West, when Western Europeans started invading many Muslim countries or colonizing Muslim countries, um, the Mu you know, many Muslims went in an apologetic mode, um, and so these Europeans were coming with this thing about you know, rationalism, rational philosophy, you know, science, all these things. Um, And you know they were, they were saying to the Muslims, oh, you, you know, how could you believe in uh, that uh, water came out of the fingers of the Prophet or you know, sort of laughing down at people who believed in these type of things. Um, so some of the Muslims obviously went into this apologetic um, type of stance. Um, yeah. yeah. Just now, yeah. yeah. Um, 
so th those uh, miracles of the Prophet above are well known, well proven, well uh, authenticated. There's no doubt in them. Um, Subhanallah. والقسم الثاني هو ادعاء النبوة فهذا القسم على قسمين. Yeah, so we did, we said that. Um, أما القسم الثالث هو ادعاء الولاية والقائلون بكرامات الأولياء اختلفوا في أنه هل يجوز أن يدعي الكرامات ثم إنها تحصل على وفق دعواه أم لا. Third uh, category is the one who is claiming wilaya. Claiming wilaya. And but he says, you know, those who are of the opinion that the awliya can perform karamat or miracles, they are divided upon whether the wali can uh, sort of um, whether he can control the karamat, you know, so he can perform karamat at will, at his own will. Or whether they happen, you know, without his... They just happen to him, but it's not within his control. Um, in other words, you know, he, he, he claims something, or, and then the thing happens as he said, you know. Whether that's possible or not, there's a difference of opinion. والم القسم الرابع وهو ادعاء السحر وتاعة الشياطين أو شيطان فعند أصحابنا يجوز ظهور خوارق العادات على يده وعند المتزن لا يجوز. and then uh, the fourth category the people who are claiming to be on the dark side so people who engage in black magic or people who worship شيطان satan worshippers He says, according to our scholars, it's permissible for these people to have uh, to perform things that break the law normal laws of physics. However, according to the Mu'tazilites, they are not able to. They they didn't believe that this was possible. Yeah, for for these Satan worshippers or black black magic to be able to perform things that were breaking the laws, the norms. Mm. Oh yeah, no, no, yeah, no. The uh, uh, the example I gave of Sai Baba, he, he, that obviously wasn't breaking the norms, but um, I wasn't saying that that can't happen. I was just saying that that particular case was not breaking the norms. Um, what I was going to say was. Um, Yeah, so obviously, for example, black magic. Now, we know in the Quran, it's mentioned, these guys came with Fir'aun and they, they, they threw the things out and they appeared to be um, serpents, etc. Um, was this Kharik al ada Was this breaking the norms? Uh, that's the question. I mean, here, I mean, obviously, they have somehow... Um, in another place, it says they bewitched the eyes of the people. You know, they made this, so they, it was like an illusion. Yeah. There's something they did something so that people saw the thing differently to what it really was. If you see what I mean, yeah, they bewitched the eyes. So that's a type of sahar. Another type of sahar mentioned in the Quran, يُفَرِّقُونَ بِهِ بَيْنَ الْمَرْءِ وَزَوْجِهِ وَمَا هُمْ بِدَارِينَ بِهِ مِنَ حَدِينِ إِلَّا بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ. 
they use black magic to break between a man and his wife. But the Quran then immediately says, however, they cannot harm anyone except with the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah. So just to remind us immediately, don't 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 get scared of uh, things like this because everything is within the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Just like you could have a heart attack or you could get cancer. So, you know, someone could do black magic on you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ultimately in control of all these things. Someone could come and shoot you or stab you. You know, all of that was within the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But so the Quran mentions that, you know, so it's an interesting question really. I mean, does that, does that constitute khawarik al ada Does that constitute breaking the norms? Or is that considered to be part of the ada part of the norms? You know what I mean? See what I mean? If we, if we say the ada are the laws of physics, then definitely even the movement of jinn and things like that breaks the normal laws of physics because they're of a different type of matter to the physical world that we're in you know, they're made of a different type of matter because we can't detect their presence you see what I mean? with physical instruments um, so they're, they're all like in a different dimension you know, they're in a different type of uh, creation um, so, so that's if we define our diet as laws of physics uh, but if we say adat are just the laws of the universe that Allah has, has put in there, then maybe those things like the movement of jinn and all of these things, afflictions of black magic through jinn, that could be part of the adat, if you see what I mean. So that's something probably for people to look into, you know, whether that's considered breaking the norms or not. Does that make sense or is that confusing? With the magicians, like with the Fir'aun. But like I said, it mentioned one place, they bewitched the eyes of the people. So they're not a magic. And yes, I don't know how it works. But somehow then the people looking at the thing, they all saw it as something different to what it really was. So some of the scholars do discuss this in later works. That, you know, this is, magic can be used in this way too. Many stories come later, you know, about... Um, you know, for for example, the person looks like a frog or something. You know, through black magic. You know, so it, it's something, but it looks like something else. Uh, but it's not that they've actually transformed into something else. But it's the eyes have been bewitched somehow. Well, uh, as far as I'm thinking, that's actually in the Quran. You know, uh, does, does anyone know the ayah I'm talk- thinking of? So that's actually the Quran that they actually bewitch the eyes of the people. But that doesn't explain more than that. So how that exactly works, you know, we don't know. It's possible. Um, that's what I'm thinking because. Obviously, when this was written, imagine if you were living at Tafa Imam al Razi or before all of this technology came about, if you read those hadith about Dajjal, he will fly from city to city through the clouds in a massive beast made of steel. You know, will hop from city to city, he will travel around the whole world. And, uh, you know, there will be no house except that he's in there. Um, a man will leave his house and then his thigh will, he will speak to people in his house. You'd, obviously, you're going to think that's just referring to khawarik al adat you know, these are just miracles, like, you know. But now, it's just part of our normal everyday life. It's technology, isn't it? So that's what I'm thinking, maybe, I mean... Allah I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, what we know from the hadith, you know, obviously he will, he will claim to be God, you know, um, and he is Masih al Dajjal, so he will claim to be the Messiah, second coming, you know, um, and obviously, as you know, m- most Christians take Jesus as, as a divinity, so he will, he will claim to be the second coming of Isa al Islam. Um, I mean, the hadith do mention, for example, he will. 
will kill Killer Man.